Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to learn how to answer limit questions when it concerns n behavior. So you see down here in this limit symbol as x approaches infinity. So we're not going towards a specific value anymore. We're just saying when x gets very large. And we could do this to the left side or the right hand side, but as x gets very large, what is this function doing? Now this is something we've actually dealt with before, so it might look familiar. Take a look at this first example, and if you haven't already, just take a moment to pause the video and jot it down. When you look at a problem like this that is composed mostly of polynomials, and there's a few other cases where you can use this where it doesn't involve just polynomials, basically what we want to do is we want to perform a power comparison test. This function is basically divided up into two segments, a numerator and a denominator, and if one grows substantially faster than the other, it will have a dominating behavior on the function as a whole. So if we look at this one, the question to always ask is which portion of the fraction dominates or which terms dominate? We look at all the terms and which one has the highest power will dominate. So we want to pick one from the numerator and pick one from the denominator and see how they compare. So which terms dominate in this one? Well, if I look at the numerator, I have an x to the third, an x, and I have a constant. So the one that's going to get bigger or smaller or fastest is going to be this term. And if I look at the denominator, the term that's going to get the biggest, the fastest, is going to be this x squared term. So if we compare those two numbers, which of the two gets biggest, the fastest? Well, if I have something to the third power, it's going to get a lot bigger, a lot faster than the x to the second power. So in this case, the numerator gets bigger much faster than the denominator. So if that happens and the numerator wins, the numerator is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger, while the denominator is becoming less and less significant, if the numerator is winning and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that means that the overall fraction is also getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that means that this function as a whole, the numerical value of this fraction is just going to continue climbing and climbing and climbing along with the numerator. So in this case, this function is going to approach infinity or increase without bound. And we can confirm that by looking at the graph as well. So never be afraid to go on to Desmos real quick and graph them if you have that ability. And we can see here that basically it's got a little lump in there, but but otherwise it is a linear function with a slope of one. Take a moment to jot this problem down. It's very similar to the last, except the powers have changed. So again, we want to ask the same question, which dominates the numerator or the denominator and specifically which terms within each. So if we look at this, we got an X squared, an X and a constant. So this one's going to win. And here we have an X squared versus a constant. So this one's going to win. So the two terms that we want to look at are those X squared terms. Uh, and in this case, it's a tie. So for every step forward we go with an X or every time X steps larger, this one gets bigger and this one gets bigger basically by the same amount. So tit for tat, these two are in a never ending battle and they will grow at the same rates. So if they grow at the same rate, it's basically like taking the same number divided by the same number. When these are really big, this three X plus two is going to become so insignificant and so will this. So like if this is a million and then this would be a million plus 3000, uh, which is no big deal. And this would be like a million plus one. Again, no big deal. So this stuff becomes less and less, less and less significant as X increases. So what does that mean? Well, then we're basically looking at X squared divided by X squared. And what, the, what would that be? The X's would cancel and we'd just be dealing with the coefficients out front. Uh, so we actually want to look at the coefficients one and one. And to get a final answer for this, basically the X squareds cancel. We ignore all this stuff and we just take one divided by one to get our answer. So this one should approach a Y value of one as we go to the right on the graph. And if we look at the graph, here we go. It actually does it on both sides. But here this function is slowly approaching one. One more example to draw the differences here. Why don't you take a moment, copy down the problem. You'll notice that the powers have changed yet again. In fact, I've eliminated a term out of the numerator. Okay, so we ask ourselves that same question, which terms dominate? You look at the top and there's a term with an X versus a constant. So the term with the X is going to dominate the numerator. Look at the denominator and we have an X squared versus a constant. So the X squared is going to dominate. Well, which one, if we compare the two, which one wins? Uh, the bottom is going to win this time. This term is going to increase faster than the top. So in this case, the denominator gets bigger than the numerator. And if you have a fraction where the denominator is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, think of this like is this like just as a constant. And this is being divided by a larger and larger number. So you have a small number divided by a big number, which is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, closer to a value of zero. And that, in fact, is the limit as we approach infinity in this case. And if we look at the graph, you can see that it approaches as we travel to the right as X goes towards infinity. 
that we get a horizontal asymptote of zero. So that basically gives us three cases, one where the numerator gets bigger than the denominator, quicker, and that would be either approached positive infinity or negative infinity, depending on some sign in the function itself. Then we also have the case where the powers are tied, so the numerator gets bigger at the same rate as the denominator. In that case, you have to compare the leading coefficients between the two leading terms, just divide them. In the case that we had, we had one divided by one, so we get an asymptote at a height of one. And then we also had the case where the denominator gets bigger than the numerator, which means that the bottom of the fraction is getting bigger, which means that the whole function's value is gonna drop towards zero as we get bigger on the x scale in either direction. I have three quick example problems. They're basically all the same thing, except you notice that the power on the leading term has changed from each problem to the next. Take a moment, write down all three. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can answer these questions directly right now. All right, if you do the power comparison test, you wanna find the term with the largest power on each the numerator and the denominator. In this case, in the first example, we have an x to the fifth versus an x to the fifth. So this time it's a tie. So we look at the leading coefficients here and we have negative five over six. This one, we have the larger power down on the denominator and this one we have the one larger on the numerator. So we can make those three observations. And since this one was a tie, let's divide the coefficients. So we get negative five sixths. If this one, the bottom wins, that means that we're always going to zero. If the bottom wins, we're going to zero. It's that simple. And if the top wins, we're going either to positive infinity or negative infinity. Now think about this. If we approach positive infinity, that means we're plugging in a large positive number. So if I took like positive a million in here, make that seven, multiply that by itself seven times. But then I have this negative out here. So we have to be very careful here because this one actually approaches negative infinity. And if we look at the graphs, that confirms it. I'll see you next time.